Okay, so welcome to mechanics. Welcome to the big world uh, where things aren't always so easy. But we're still going to start off with things as easy as possible. So let's say that I have a ball and it's moving this way with some velocity and it's in, I don't know, let's say I like shoot the ball into some thick liquid and there's no gravity. Okay, and so in that case, um, I could, I could say there's only one force on there, a drag force, this way, that has a value of, in the x direction, of negative b, v. That's, it, really it's a vector, okay? But I'm doing it, it's a one dimensional problem, so I'm trying to make this simple. So that's the only force I have on it. So it's moving this way, but the, it's, there's a force pushing it back that way. In physics one, introductory physics, you had a constant drag force like friction. And that's pretty easy to solve. But now, the faster it's going, the greater the force. That's not so easy. Okay, so if I do this, if I say F net X equals M A X. And so this is my X direction. That's my Y direction. So I have M, I'll just call this A because it's only one direction, equals negative B V. And B is some constant, okay? And this is the drag constant, you can consider it. It depends on the type of liquid, it depends on the size of the, of the ball, it depends on the shape of the ball, it's a ball, but, okay, so that's just a, a parameter that doesn't change. So how do I solve this? Let's, let's write this as A is just gonna be dV dt equals negative B over M V, okay? Now I have a differential equation. This says that the derivative of this depends on the value of that. Um, you could probably guess. You could probably guess the solution of this. Okay. You could do two things. You could um, you could make this variable separable. You could say, um, and let's let's do it that way. Okay. Let's get all the v terms on one side and all the non-v terms on the other side. Um, I think maybe that would be the best way to do it. Yeah. Let's do it that way. Okay, so I get dV d over V equals negative B over M dT, right? You can just algebraically manipulate these differentials as though they were just real things. So you can do that. Okay, so now if I integrate both sides, I get this, the, the integral of what do you take the derivative of and you get 1 over V if I integrate both sides. This would be just like natural log of v, and this would be equal to negative b over m t plus some constant. I mean, I don't need two constants. I don't need a constant on that side and a constant on that side. I just need one. Okay. So one of the ways we find the constant is to say at t equals zero, I need some boundary condition. So at t equals zero, v of zero equals some constant velocity. It has to start with some velocity, v zero. So now if I put in zero into this equation for t, I get ln of v equals negative v over m zero plus c. So if this is the initial, the velocity at time t equals zero, then c would have to be uh, equal to the natural log, that's a natural log, of v zero. So now I know C, I can subtract that from both sides. No, let's leave it there. So now let's say I have, going back, a natural log of V equals negative B over M T plus natural log of V zero. You know, one of the things that, that's okay in math, right? You can take the natural log of velocity, but in real life you can't. You can only take the natural log of unitless quantities. But that's okay. So what I'm going to do actually is take the exponential of both sides. So e to the natural log of v is just going to be v of t. And then over here, since I have an, a, a sum, this is going to be actually v0, because that's e to the that, times e to the negative b over m t. And that's my uh, expression for the velocity as a function of time. Now, let's just check here real quick. So if this, if V uh, is 
negative BV is the force, then this has to have so negative BV equals newtons. That's in newtons. And this is going to be, uh, don't worry about the, don't worry about the minus sign, we're just talking about the units. So I have B, the units of B times meters per second equals um, a newton, which is a kilogram meter per second squared. That's the same thing as a newton. So the units for B has to be equal to a kilogram per second, right? Okay, so if I divide by the mass, you have, yep, okay, kilogram per second. So if I take B over M, I get one over seconds. So I could say tau is a time constant equal to m over b, the mass over b, and that would be in units of seconds. So I can't have exponential of a unit. So this has to be a unitless quantity, and it is. Okay. So I could write this as uh, v0 e to the negative t over tau. And that's my velocity. And so as time increases, uh, the velocity, e, this approaches one, I mean, I'm sorry, this approaches zero as that gets bigger. And so this also goes to zero. So the velocity decreases as time goes on. Okay, but what about the position? What if I want to find the position of the ball as a function of time? Okay, so here I have uh, dv dt equals x. No, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> it is early in the morning. Okay. D <laughs> dx v, uh, v equals dx dt, right? Okay, so I can say, and that's v is a function of time. So dx equals v dt. Now again, I can integrate both sides. Now when I integrate this, I'm going to integrate this from uh, the initial x to x at some time. Now I do have a small problem here. I want to have this at x 0 to x as a function of time. And this is going to be integral from uh, v 0, I guess technically and still this be t coming into written over t. t0 to t. Now, math people were like, well, you can't do that. You can't have a limit of t and an integral, a differential t. So we need a different variable to integrate up to that point. So I'm going to call that t prime, just to note that they're different. Okay. Um, so this is going to give me, this is easy to integrate. I just get uh, x, so I get x at some time t minus the initial x. And this side I can put in for uh, that for v. So I get t0 to t of v0 e to the negative t prime over tau dt prime. Okay, so if I integrate that, not too difficult, I get v0. Now, if I take the derivative, I get tau, 1 over tau. So this would be tau e to the negative t prime over tau. That's right, right? I don't know why I always get that confused. Yeah. And then I have to evaluate that from t0 to t. And, and uh, I guess we could call t0, 0. Okay, so now I'm going to get... Uh, v0 tau e to the negative t, because I'm putting in t over there, over tau, minus v0 tau e to the 0, which is 1. So this is going to be equal to v0 tau e to the negative t over tau minus 1, plus x0 
and that's going to be x as a function of time. Yeah, I think that's right. Wait, negative. Oh, aha, negative. Yeah, this is ne there's a negative sign right there. That's negative. That's negative. So that's negative right there. Okay, so let's look. As t gets really large, this term goes to 0, and we get 1. Right. So eventually, the x position stops changing. Eventually, we get to the part where, because we stop, right? Okay, but that's the x position as a function of time. I'm going to, in class, do the same problem, but I'm going to do it numerically. So hopefully, we should be able to get the same answer. Okay, so that's the pretty much simplest possible case for drag, and we can solve it exactly. Next, we'll do a slightly more complicated case.